Good afternoon, and I hope you can see me because I see that I haven't turned my phone over far enough. Let me move that there. Uh, today, I want to share with you about the difference between healing the sick and praying for the sick. A lot of people think that the Word of God says to pray for the sick, but I think it only says one place to pray for the sick. I think everywhere else it says heal the sick. So a lot of people think that praying for the sick, like, and they pray like, oh God, if it be your will, heal this person. Or they say something like, uh, let me get over here. They say something like, um, if it be your will, God, but if not, it's okay. And God never told us, he said pray for the sick, but he said heal the sick. And there's a big difference between praying for the sick and healing the sick. When you heal the sick, you're commanding, you're speaking a prayer, what's called commanding prayer. You're not asking because see, the, the work of God is already done. It's a finished work. 2,000 years ago, before you were ever born, Jesus uh, died for all of your sins. 2,000 years ago, before you were ever born, Jesus took the stripes on his back for your healing so you wouldn't even have to get sick. And if you did get sick, he took the stripes for you. So, 2,000 years ago, he became poor that through his poverty you might be rich. 2,000 years ago, he did it all. He has given us everything for life and godliness. And we have to take what he has given us. And we're not asking God. We're not begging God. God already did it all. And what he wants us to do, because he gave man all authority and all dominion on the earth, what he wants us to do is to speak and command whatever it is that, that we're looking for or that we're needing. In other words, instead of laying hands on the sick and saying, uh, Father, I just pray that you heal this person. We're supposed to be laying hands on the sick and say, for example, if they say they have had a stroke, you lay hands on them and you say, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit of death to go. I take authority over you. I forbid you to operate. I command you to go from this person and not to return. In Jesus' name. And then you would say something like, I speak life to you. I command all the body parts that were damaged by the stroke. I speak life to you. I command you to come alive. I command you to function properly in Jesus' name. And then I thank you, Daddy, for healing this person. So it's it's a commanding prayer that we should be praying and decreeing and commanding and telling the spirits what to do because they hearken to the voice of of the word and so we have to um, speak and command that that it happen it's already been finished but we're like spiritual policemen we're to enforce what was already accomplished on the cross and the way we do that is by commanding prayer not by whipping out and saying if it be your will because he already said what his will is his will is that everybody be healed and everybody be saved. And his will does not happen unless Christians speak it, unless Christians command it. Uh, because, and we're not speaking to that person when we command that spirit of cancer or stroke or whatever to go. We're speaking to the spirit that is hurting the person's body. Uh, if our child is rebellious, um, we're, we, have to, we still love that child. We win them by loving but we speak to that spirit when we close our door and that child somewhere else and go in the bedroom, lay on the bed, release the anointing from our body, uh, walk around the room and command all the demonic spirits to leave that's been influencing our kid. We command. We don't say, oh, Father, save my kid. I love my kid. Save my kid. We don't speak like that. We command. We say, in Jesus' name, I command you, demons that are influencing my child that are causing them to be rebellious, I command you to go and call out the names of whatever's happening in your child. If they're being rebellious, say, I command you, rebellious spirit, to go in Jesus' name, not to return no more. I take authority over you. You're not allowed in my house. I forbid it. If they're um, they're feeling uh, suicidal, you take authority over the spirit of suicide. Spirit of suicide, I command you to go. Go to the foot of the cross. Go to a dry place. Go. Get out of here in Jesus' name. You have no right to be on my child. You have no authority to be on my child. This is my household and I allow you. And I release the host of heaven to go with my child, to protect my child, to cause them not to be bullied, to cause them to be in the right place at the right time. And I thank you, Father, that they're protected. So you command it. You command 
what God has already done. You use your authority. And that's what Christians are not doing today. I've been in some churches uh, which are very frustrating. I'm not going to name them. Uh, for a little while visiting them. And they don't even hold their hands in praise. And they don't know how to pray. They always pray, if it be your will. The devil will walk all over the people who don't know what God's will is. We're supposed to command the will. We're not supposed to be, if it be your will. His will is well known. His will is on the cross. He took your sickness, your diseases, your poverty, lack, your fear. If you find it in the word, it's already done. And you have to enforce it. You are the thing that changes the circumstances. You're the one that has the power to raise the dead. You're the one that has the power to heal, to cast out demons, to cleanse leopards. It's, it's you because you are the flesh that Jesus lives in today. You are his legs, his hands, his feet, his mouth. The word of God is seed and the seed is planted inside of you and you speak when you speak what God says, you're speaking the seed, and the seed produces fruit in the harvest. In other words, if you need healing, you speak healing, and it produces the fruit of healing. Because it's already been done, it's just a matter of taking authority and commanding. And so, there is a difference between commanding prayer and praying for the sick and healing the sick. Sometimes all you have to do is lay your hands on them, and the demons know who you are, they run. So, And, and you stand your ground. Healing has already been given to you. So you stand your ground until healing comes. Don't be afraid to pay, pray for somebody two, three, four times until healing comes. And always thank God because it's already done. It's just that demon has to obey. And sometimes um, it, it tells us to raise the dead. There's no faith involved on the other person's side when you're raising the dead because they're dead. So it's your faith and you have enough faith to do everything God gave you and told you to do. It's not a matter of having more faith because he gave every man the measure of faith. The most amount of faith you ever needed was to be born again. So you have enough faith to do everything God told you to do. All you have to do is believe it and use it. If you're not using it, if you're not practicing with it, then you're not going to experience it. Everything comes through faith and, and the, you can build your faith uh, in, in the sense of not making it bigger but making it stronger by practicing if uh, you, you need to command things speak to things decree things you need to call it to you you need to call it yours everything the word says so anyway so the difference God told us to heal the sick not as much pray for them but to heal them so my name is Robin Bremer net is my website check it out uh, I just released a book called commanding prayer which talks about this which also I shared a little bit on my live uh, Facebook post. I am getting a weak signal, so I am going to hang up, and I will talk to you later. Have a blessed day.